Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds, and welcome to Ask the Cheese Man. This is episode one, no, hang on, what are we? Oh, 201. That's amazing. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show last week where Kim joined me. She won't be joining us today, so uh, she's having a sleep in. She's a bit tired, so, yep, that's what we do. We let our spouses have a sleep in. Um, for those who don't know, I'm Gavin Weber. I'm the Chief Curd Nerd, and I will be attempting to answer your home cheese making questions uh we are live on youtube facebook and twitch currently okay uh let's say good day to a few people before we do that just a big shout out to thank to all my youtube members and patrons thank you very much for your financial support there were no new ones this week but uh thanks to all existing for keeping the show running and for helping out uh, us financially. It's fantastic. Um, so, shout outs. Where, where are we at? We've got lots of stuff going on on YouTube. Uh, who was the first cab off the rink? It was Adrian from uh, Argentina. Goodness me. What time was it in Argentina? Uh, be about 5, 6 p.m., something like that. Um, pretty close. I'm looking at my world map over here. I've got a little, I've got it on an iPad so I can tell where everybody is and what time it is where they are. Um, big g'day to Annette. Hello, Annette. Uh, lovely to see you. Bill. G'day, Bill. Um, who else? We've got Mikel. G'day, Mikel. We've got Cease. We've got Judy. We've got Smash. It says, hi, Grant. Who's Grant? Not sure who that Grant is. Um, but uh, yeah, very cool. Um, we've also got Herb. G'day, Herb. Lovely to see you, mate. Long time no see on the on the stream. Manel, g'day, Manel. There you're there every week. Wendy, g'day, Wendy. Star Farms, how are you? Um, Lindsay, g'day, Lindsay. Uh, and you've got a funny little anecdote here. Uh, g'day, Gavin Kim. I'm surrounded by Omicron and fighting it off with Gouda and Edom. Should I add cheddar to be sure? Of course, I think that'll help. Not that I'm giving any medical advice for um, COVID at all. Cheese couldn't hurt. It's like a good cup of tea. Couldn't hurt, you know. All righty. Um, Bill. G'day, Bill. Uh, who else we got? Um, Herb says that the 200th show was great. Thank you, Herb. Appreciate it, mate. Um, yeah, it was it was good fun. Um, funny that I, I noticed that... Um, uh, I know that people can't see dislikes on YouTube anymore, but in the background, I actually had more dislikes for last week's show than I have for the previous 10 shows. So I don't know what's going on there. Maybe people just didn't like the format. Too many dogs. Maybe that's what it was, but I thought it was enjoyable anyway. Uh, Stranger Land and, Land and Livestock. I can't remember your name. Sorry about that. But yeah, thanks for coming along. Robert. G'day, Robert. We've got Jordan, Jim. Uh, Jim says the 200th was beyond great. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it, mate. Um, we got uh, Alt Mega Mega Cat Lego Alt. Um, hello, how are you? Uh, who else we got? Cool Cat says it's, I'll tell you what time it is. It's cheese time. And they're in the UK. Uh, Ernest, g'day, mate. Daniel, Mr. Ms. Oh, sorry, Ms. Spinner. Ms. Spinner, uh, first question of the day. Let's get to that. Oh, sorry, let's not. Sorry, we'll we'll stop right there. There's lots more hellos. We'll, we'll get to as we go through the questions and stuff. Thank you very much. Um, so the videos this week, we're going to be having... Uh, sorry, the, the video we'll have this week is called Guido's Hard Italian Cheese. It's a re recipe from the third edition of... Ricky Carroll's Home Cheese Making Book. It's not in the fourth edition. I couldn't find it. But it's in the third edition. And, uh, yeah, I got the recipe off, Learn to Make Cheese. They've got lots of recipes over there as well from uh, fellow curd nerds. And uh, I borrowed that and uh, made the cheese. And it's going to be backpacked today. So I'll film that last little bit and uh, pop it in the cheese fridge. 
and then produce the video. So we should have a video this week. Uh, another cheese that I made was uh, Graviera, but uh, there's a couple of styles of Graviera. It's a Greek cheese. Uh, there's one from Crete, which is made with sheep's milk. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any sheep's milk. Uh, but the other version I found was from the island of Naxos, um, and it has 80% cow's milk and... 80% uh, cow's milk and 20% goat's milk. So that's what I did. So I used a combination of cow and goat's milk to make a Graviera style cheese. I know it's a PDO or AOC or whatever, protection designation of origin cheese, but mine's different than everybody else's. And uh, I could call it Gaviera. <laughs> there we go. Let's do that. Uh, my Gaviera, we'll do that. Take away the R, then they won't know. They won't know who it is. Whew. Anyway, um, and uh, what cheese? What other cheeses? Let's have a look. Let's share a board. I have a Trello board here somewhere. Where is it? Trello. And we'll share the screen and we'll go to the window and there we go. So uh, cheeses that are in Prado. Like I said, the Guido cheese, you can see that in my little cursor there. So that one is the one I'm doing. It's a hard Italian style cheese and you can eat it in three weeks i think it says on the recipe so it's a bit like cafilli but a hard italian style cheese and then we've got graviera which is very similar to um gruyere um so i'll be calling that gaviera <laughs> uh the other recipes pre-planning i've got cacio ricotta triple cream fundy fog thanks patricia if you're there for um uh for the uh the recipe for that uh we got ways with way red windsor was another cheese i stumbled across um which is a port and brandy infused cheese very interesting made similar to derby so i'll be making it in the derby style uh prima donna fino i'm going to be trying that uh tete de morne um types of mold in cheese making dan bows on the list jack in the box from cheryl that's on the list. And we've got the pictures of the results of that in the gallery today. And Alp Blossom, they're the ones that I've got planned uh, as we move through 2022. So great cheeses, great little cheeses. Let's just kill the Trello board. There we go. Um, we, what was I doing? Oh, Yes, questions. Right. That's what we're here for, isn't it? Oh, hang on. I need a glass of water. No coffee this morning. It's too hot. Um, we're going through a bit of a heat wave down, down here in Melbourne. I think we're going to have seven days over 32 or something. We certainly had a last, what, two? Two days have been over 32 degrees Celsius, that is. So what's that in Fahrenheit? Hey, Siri, convert 32 Celsius to Fahrenheit. 32 degrees Celsius is 89.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And yes, she has an Aussie voice. So that's 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, probably get up to 35 today, they reckon. So anyway, back to the questions. Um, so the first question from it was from Ms. Spinner says, um, Hi, Gav, if adding herbs, is it better to use dried or fresh? Mm, good question. So um, how about freshly dried? If that's a that's an answer so freshly dried are the best they hold the most aromatic oils uh within them uh so don't use herbs that have been sitting in the cupboard for like two years all the aromatics have gone out of those uh out of those herbs so yeah it's best to use freshly dried so that the it's very hard to find them in the supermarkets but if you can get them from markets and stuff like that's probably the best way to go because like dried herbs lose their lose their potency. Um, next question is oh, a couple of more good days. We've got a uh, Townsteading, uh, Alina, uh, Carolyn Rince, who uh, hi Melton from Limburg, Belgium. Very nice, I dare say that's the home of Limburger. <laughs> uh, Panhead, g'day mate from Columbus, Ohio. Jody, g'day Jody, Port Charlotte, Florida. What time is it in Florida? Oh, must be about 4, 10 p.m., something like that. Uh, Linton Pear, uh, g'day from an Aussie in Aberdeen, Scotland. Lovely to see you. 
Um, Desmond, good day from New Zealand. G'day, mate. Um, Frederick from Sweden. Goodness me. Um, uh, Stranger Land and Livestock says, it's Stang R now. No worries, mate. Okay, cool. Um, here's a good comment. Uh, Leslie says, people who dislikes just to be different, stupid, so discount them as they call it trolling, and in real life, they would never do something similar. They'd probably never say it to your face, so yeah, you're right. Um, uh, Bill says that he loved the 200 show. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it, mate. Um, I am going to be working over the next few weeks on another uh, 12 hours of cheese. So 12 hours of live cheese. So um, because I've got a few more recipes under my belt since then. I did the last one in July last year. Uh, so I wanted to make it a little bit more regular than, say, a um, uh, one each year. Uh, I wanted to do a couple of uh, a year, but uh, we're trying to ramp up the business now so to get some more sales in. So we'll, we'll see how time goes. But no promises, but I really do want to do another 12 hours of cheese. It was so much good fun, but it was very taxing, but I had to do a fair bit of pre-work to do that. Like So like string all the pre-recorded videos together. Uh, organize all the interviews that I had. We had three live interviews that day as well. Uh, and the Ask the Cheese Man sessions during the day as well. Whew, I tell you what, it was a big day. Anyway, so we'll use that. Uh, Kevin's got a question. And Kevin says, use some previously frozen goat's milk for feta. But the curds fractured. How can I avoid that? The milk did separate, but used an immersion blended combine before adding the rennet. Um, oh, the best way to avoid it is to avoid using frozen milk, Kevin. Unfortunately, um, in my experience, uh, the frozen milk that I have used before, it does break up the proteins in it, and it really does. You need to add. Uh, a little bit more calcium chloride, uh, I would say probably another 25%, especially with goat's milk, because it's very hard to set a curd um, if goat's milk has been pasteurized anyway. So, yeah, so there's some hints. I hope that helps. Um, but, yeah, it's best to use fresh rather than frozen. Donna says, um, I've had great luck with a variety of your cheeses. Not tried Munster. Would you suggest... Uh, your little monsters recipe or another recipe. Also, how long do the spray-on culture stay good refrigerated? Um, yeah, the, those little monsters were okay um, that I made. Um, they I over-ripened them. That, that was my problem. Um, that I think that recipe still stands good, so you could try that. I don't think that'll be a hassle. Just eat them earlier than what I did. Um, the spray-on culture will last for about seven days. But you remember that the, you only use that spray-on culture for the first you know, the first week anyway, so it's no big deal. And you're only using, what, one sixty-fourth of a teaspoon of Brevi bacterial linen, so it's not very much. Uh, it, it really won't make a dent in the budget, I don't think. Okay, uh, Kevin says as he is in the process of making Red Leicester today. Uh, best of luck. It's a great cheese. Uh, Kim was talking about that last week, so that was very good. Um, we've got a super chat, but it didn't appear on the thingo. So Cheese V uh, over on YouTube has just... There we go. So Oh, it's a super sticker. So super stickers don't flash. I'll flash the light for you. There we go. Here we go. There we go. Curd nerd alert. Well done, um, Chess V. Thank you so much. Hands doing a fist bump. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you can see it. So very good. Thank you so much for your $2 uh, super sticker, which are pretty cool. Um, and I can see you've become a member as well. So thank you so much for that. Okay. Uh, back to uh, the questions. Um all right, so what's the most romantic cheese for Valentine's, says Alt Mega Cat Lego Alt. How about I just call you Alt? That'll do. Uh, the most romantic cheese for Valentine's Day. Ah, yes. So I would suggest, um, and let me see 
can I find it? Goodness me, I've got so many things open. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, can I find? Ah, there she is. Um, stop playing. Stop playing the video. Um, I'm trying to find the share link so I can share it with everybody. So in the uh, in the chat is my recommendation for a um, uh, for a. Oh, if I can get back to it, sorry, I'm, because I'm doing all this myself, it's a little bit more confusing. Um, uh, yeah, so I uh, Neuf Chatel, so petite Neuf Chatel, and it's in the shape of little hearts. So little hearts, very nice. Um, I don't know if I can find a picture, but the link's there, um, and you can go and check out that video, petite Neuf Chatel. Uh, and that'd be the perfect gift for Valentine's Day for your loved one if you're going to make cheese. So. Um, I will be promoting that. Hey, that's a good idea. Let's promote that for Valentine's Day. Uh, just uh, on all the socials, promote uh, Neuf Chatel. All right, very cool. Um, we've got another super chat going on there. Um, let me just see who sent that in. That was from Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, love the curd nerd sign. It's very cool. Um $17.50 United States dollars. Uh, cool. 12 hours of cheese. Can't wait. Yes, it is. It is fun. Um, I started at, when did I start last time? 7 a.m. my time here. Uh, not sure what time that'll be around the world. So it's probably afternoon on a Saturday. And then I go to uh, 7 p.m. here my time. So yeah, it is a full 12 hours. I think I cut it short 15, 20 minutes last year because I was just so so tired by the end of it but yeah it was it was great content we did a wrap up at the end and that was really cool um yeah so that was really good so thank you very much uh let's have a look for the next question lots of questions that's great um so uh cheryl says who just gave me the super chat thank you cheryl says, I will be attending a 1600s living history event in March. What type of cheese can I make at the event or make in advance and store without refrigeration? Ooh. Uh, have a look at Townsend's channel. Um, I don't have the link to that, but go look for Townsend's. Uh, and Jazz Townsman... Uh, does a great job. He's done quite a few um, early American uh, cheeses. Uh, they're all very simple farmhouse cheeses. He, he's actually got in um, reenactment um, cheeses to um, cheese makers to make the cheese. He he didn't make it himself. He had somebody make it. But yeah, go and check out his channel for some ideas. Uh, some great early American living there. Um, and I think that'll be able to help you out, Cheryl. So go and check out uh, Jazz Townsman, Townsend and Sons, I think is the name of the channel. So, yeah, he, he does a really good job. He's a very passionate man, and, and yeah, it's it's really cool. Um, so, Cheryl, that's my advice to you. Uh, they've got lots of – he's got a, probably four or five cheese recipes over there. Um, Annette says, um, da, 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 da. I just made the Gorgonzola Dolce uh, following your recipe. It's at the salting stage and looks amazing so far. I can't wait to see some blue. Yeah, I the, the, I noticed that the blue started at about day, oh, what was it? Day t between 7 and 10, you can expect a bit of blue grow, uh, growth, but then by day 14, it's totally covered and um, I had a look at mine yesterday and it's starting to wrinkle like, you know, the uh, the buttermilk blue did, a little brain thing. <laughs> it looks very cool. Uh, it's starting to do that now and I expect it will start to uh, start smelling soon as all good blue cheeses do. So that'll be the next stage. But yeah, that's ready to taste for me, I think, in February. So I was going to leave it for about 90 days. Um, if I try it earlier, then I'll let you guys know. Obviously, we'll do a taste test video earlier because if I think it's going to go too ripe, 
Uh, I know a Gorgonzola Dolce is a really creamy, runny blue cheese compared to Gorgonzola Picanti, so which is a really strong, old, really bitey blue cheese, whereas Gorgonzola Dolce is, is a smoother, creamier, almost spreadable sort of blue cheese, which is what I'm aiming for. Okay, um, Townsteading says, I've got some pictures of our Derby and Cotswold I need to send you. They both turned out really well. I'm going to put those in the make regular rotation. Yeah, they are great cheeses, um, uh, especially since uh, Cotswold is one of my wife Kim's favourites. So, yeah, it's it. both cheeses are really good and they taste really nice too. Um but yeah, yeah, send me some pictures too, and I'll show you after the gallery at um in 10 minutes time, I'll show you how to uh send photos if you can't remember. Okay. Um Dominic says, um, good morning, Gavin. How far do you live from Ainsbury Market? Uh that is on today. Uh we're probably about 20 minutes away, Dominique. Um, but no, we're not going to the market today. We're still kind of self-quarantining, remembering that Kim's um, immune system was compromised with not only all that chemo, but she's got MS as well. So I don't know if I've ever told you that. I think we did over on the other channel. Um, but yeah, we're, we're staying away from crowds still. So unfortunately, that's our life at the moment. Um, until, even though we've been triple vaxxed. Anyway, we'll move right along. Um, Herb says that the uh, 12 hours was a pretty cool. Indeed it was, Herb, and I did see you there You there for quite a long time. Um, let's have a look. Um, cool Cat says, Cool Cat? Yeah, Cool Cat. I'm so making my first cheese, inspired by yours truly, and I don't know what cheese to make. Um, there's a very cool video on the channel, Cool Cat. <laughs> cool. So many cools. Um, if you go and have a look at uh, beginner's cheeses uh, without a cheese fridge or something like that, I'm pretty sure it's one of the highest ranking um, Ask the Cheese Mans, actually. Um, so, yeah, go and check that out. So it's uh, beginner's cheeses without a cheese fridge. And there's a whole bunch of cheeses, probably about five or six, I think I mentioned, with the recipe links in the little card up in the um, the corner, You'll you know, that little eye that pops up on a YouTube video. Uh, lots of recipes in there for those cheeses. So great place to start. Uh, we've got a new patron as well has just turned up. Oh, goodness me. Um, where's my emails? Can I? Uh, who's that? Freddy Frederick Peterson. Thank you very much. Frederick just became a, uh, a patron this month. Thank you. On the fly. How good is that? All righty. Um, Here's a question from Townsteading, a Gruyere question. I have Gruyere. I started on, are these American dates or Australian dates? All right, I'll assume it's American. So let's say November 14th, 21, and I've been salt washing it twice a week, but the blue and white mould is winning the war. Do you think I could vacuum pack it? Uh, yeah, if you think it's dried out enough, let me think, what's that? One one month, nearly. Yeah, it's two months. Two months old. Should be dry enough. Um, so, yeah, you could safely vacuum pack that. Uh, even though traditional Gruyere, even though it's a really big wheel, so it doesn't tend to dry out as much. Uh, and all those molds that grow on it, they start to dry out. They don't, they're not wet anymore uh, on a real Gruyere. And then you get this browning effect on the surface of the cheese. You would have seen that with my Gruyere when I did the video of that. Uh, you would have seen a surface browning. Uh, that's because I let the white and the blue moulds go dry and I just brush them off with a soft cloth uh, once a week. So they may seem to be winning, but they're not really. They're just surface mould, which actually adds a little bit of flavour to the um, the cheese. Don't let them get established. Just wipe them straight off. And like I said, you'll see a browning of the surface of the cheese and that's completely natural for a natural rind cheese. Uh, I hope that helped. Um, Star Farms says, I was organising my cultures in the freezer. Is it best to move the bulk pack cultures to small jar with a screw lit, screw on lid? Yeah, indeed. Um, do I have any? Oh, no, they took them. Um, 
Yeah, so there's a little yellow uh, sample jar. So the, the ones you say to pathology, the sterile ones, that's where I store my cultures in. Um, so I've got those. I take them out of the bulk packets, pour them into those jars, screw the lid on tight, and they're airtight. So that's a good thing, um, especially for the freeze-dried cultures and when you store them in the freezer for long-term storage. They don't go gluggy. If your cultures are still fresh and running, you know, like flowing, you know, you can hear them rattle. Um, and they're still in a powder form, good to go. I've been using cultures that have been two years past their date. They're used by date because, you know, we have stuff that expire, people don't buy it on time, and I can't sell it after the best before date, unfortunately, due to Australian laws. So I use it myself, and, um, yeah, I, the last, in fact, uh, the Gruyere and the, uh, Gra uh, the Gaviera that I made this week I used a culture from 2019 that was, you know, free flowing and it was perfect. And they turned out all right. And they got a great, uh, great aroma to them so far. Uh, they're air drying on the counter, and you'll see a picture of those in the gallery in three minutes' time. So yeah, so those cultures in screw lid jar, little sterile jar, perfect. Um, Uh, Desmond says, uh, I like making pizza and have struggled to find provolone in Auckland. Uh, what substitutes? Uh, Scamorza, Scamora is a good... Scamorza is a good substitute that may be even harder to find, which is a smoked style mozzarella, which is aged for about a couple of months. Uh, that's very nice. Um the shredded mozzarella that you find is not the same. It, that's a low moisture mozzarella that they make uh, in cheese factories just for pizza. Um, make yourself some traditional mozzarella. Have a look at that cow's milk version that I made. Uh, that was really good on pizza. So um, you could use that. That and that it doesn't really it doesn't melt like the the low moisture stuff because the the high moisture mozzarella. Even if you can buy it over there, I'm pretty sure they've got buffaloes and they've got somebody making buffalo milk uh, mozzarella balls that are held in a brine. I'm sure they got that over in New Zealand. They've got some over. They've got a herd over here in Australia now. I think it's uh, Shaw, Shaw River Farms, I think, here in Victoria that are making a buffalo milk mozzarella. And cutting, slicing those up and putting on pizza, absolutely fantastic. It's a beautiful flavour. That's my suggestion. Or, uh, on the other hand, a great melting cheese. Try, if you can get your hands on it, um, uh, raclette is really amazing flavour. Great on potatoes, so it'll be great on pizza. And another one, a really good Gruyere as well. I know they're both imported, but there may be substitutes. Artisan cheese makers may be making a style of that in New Zealand. Uh, so you can give that a try. Uh, Chess V says the curd nerd sign is amazing. Yes, I, I love it. Um, I actually got it manufactured. There's a, a shop in Geelong, which is just down the road from us, um, about an hour's drive away. A little shop that does neon signs. They're not neon, that's LED. Um, I think they get them. You, you send them the design on their website and they um, ship it off the design to China or the Chinese make it for us. Send it back again. And yeah, that this was the, I think it was the smallest or medium. It was a medium size one. When we got it in the post, I couldn't believe how big it was, but thankfully it was. Oh, there's the time for the gallery. Sip of water and we'll start that up. Oh, goodness me. There we go. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's start the gallery. Oh, and before we go, just a quick one. Tracy Johnson. G'day, Tracy. Lovely. I see that in February, you will be the new owner of cheeseneeds.com, which is a cheesemaking shop out of British Columbia in Canada. Well done and congratulations. Uh, and I hope your new book is going well as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, let's do the gallery. Um, let me just share that. Um, ba -ba. Uh, here we go. Sharing the gallery. Right. First cab off the rank, we got uh, Bruce Gifford. Thank you, Bruce, for sending these in. He's got a bit of a spear somewhere. Let's have a look. 
excuse my voice, getting a bit hoarse already. Um, we have on the, uh, what is it, the uh, right-hand side, <clears throat> this is a saffron farmhouse uh, cheddar that is finishing drying. He oiled it up, added her to the cheese fridge container um, with a lid and gave her farmhouse cheddar sister, which is on the left, and two days older, uh, another light coat. Um, I don't tend to use oil except for hard Italian cheeses uh, once they get to that stage where they're getting um, uh, too much mould growth on the outside. I give them a, a light oil once a month. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's your oil it won't dry out. But, anyway, it says here <clears throat> probably better to separate for contamination issues, but they have identical milks, procedures and cultures. Uh, I may yet either vac pack or wax haven't decided so far so good for a brand new cheesemaker. Indeed, they look lovely. Um, let's, and there they are there on your uh, on your stove hob. Bruce has also got another cheese. So this is, let's have a look. This is a spring goat gouda that he made. And that looks amazing. So that's goat's milk, pure white cheese. Um, and yeah, I've, from experience, I've tasted a goat's milk gouda and it does taste very nice indeed. Um, so that's very cool. Uh, let's have a look. Is there another picture of that? Yeah, there it is. There it is shaved. Um, goat's cheese just has a special something. If you're just used to cow's milk cheeses, try goat's milk if you can get it. It really is great. And that's a great photo. Thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, another picture from Bruce. This is a... Um, summer dale wensley dale with cranberries um which is a great looking cheese as well um it's got a lot of cranberries what he's done is chopped those up and then milled them through the cheese is there another one no that's it oh that was a surprise um so that that is the um that's his cranberry sorry wensley dale with cranberry so he's you know, i i tended to use when i made the uh, the white stilton with cranberries, I used them whole. So chopping them up finely like this and distributing them through, he's getting a little bit of coloration, uh, which is great. So a little bit of a pink color through the cheese. Now, it's very crumbly, he told me. So I think I might have over-acidified because cranberries naturally aren't sweet. They're, they're like sour. So there might have been a little bit more acid development than, uh, than he needed. So maybe a little bit less acidification time. But anyway, it looks like a great cheese. So thank you so much, Bruce. Um, slipped into the gallery this week. Oh, there we go. There's my new merch. Uh, you'll see that on the merch shelf as well. Um, there are more cheeses after this. This is just a, a plug for merch. Uh, and this is my new T-shirt. It's called a, a Cheesegasm. It's like a dictionary quote. I made it up myself. <laughs> uh, and I have used the word cheesegasm on the show. It's not a dirty word. Kim blushes when I actually say it, <laughs> so I don't know why. Uh, but, yeah, my um, my definition is it's an orgasmic rush that occurs during the consumption of a very tasty cheese, usually affecting only hardcore curd nerds. Indeed, I think. I think that's a great T-shirt. So it's in a few colours, a few styles. So go and check that out. Um, if you're on YouTube, go to the merch shelf. Uh, and at the end of the show, for those who aren't on YouTube and on Facebook, I can put a, uh, a link. I'll put a link, which is cool. All right, back to the pictures in the gallery. <laughs> uh, this one's from Cheryl, and Cheryl has some blurb here too. This is the Jack in the Box. So I've got Cheryl's recipe or her idea, uh, which she's said I can use. So this is her Jack in the Box. It's a bit crumbly, but all aged um, farmhouse cheeses are like that. Uh, so it says, um, hi, Gavin, Jack in the Box. Super excited today. I took the cloth banding off my Jack in the Box cheese. I'm sending you a few pictures. I wish I had made a bigger batch of farmhouse cheddar to get more dramatic and defined uh, box in the middle. The flavor was stunning. My vacuum packing, sorry, I am vacuum packing some to age longer. This was a huge hit with everybody who tried it. However, I didn't show them the mouldy pictures until they tasted it. Ha ha! So that has turned out really well. Let's, there's the mouldy pictures. So that's the cheesecloth that when she's taken it off, and the and the cheese itself. 
and she's given that a bit of, and there's a little bit of mold on the surface of the cheese. But once you clean it up, you can't tell the difference. And once you cut into it, it's just amazing. So cloth banded cheeses are a labor of love. You've got to watch them, make sure that they don't get mold infection in the cheese itself. But I'll tell you what, the flavor is worth it. I know that from experience with the, you know, what the two year old cheddar that I made cloth banded it for about, I think it was about six months and then vacuum packed it after that because I used coconut oil, which I do not recommend anymore. Um, now, she's got another question here about Parmesan. says, uh, sorry, missed your 200th show live, but we were celebrating our 24th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Um, I was doing my weekly cheese routine and noticed small cracks on my Parmesan. I made it on the 19th of September 2021. Is there any reason for concern? Thanks for having uh, a wealth of knowledge. Cheryl from Florida. Um, yeah, you can just see the cracks there. It's starting to dry out on the surface too much. Uh, and there's another picture. There we go. So it is drying out on top. Uh, and this is natural with smaller wheels of Parmesan. So what you can do, um, probably the best thing to do so it doesn't get infected in those cracks, Cheryl, is to vacuum pack it now. It looks dry, certainly looks dry enough. So you won't get any um, whey seeping out during vacuuming for the rest of the aging period. So September, so that's October, November, December, three months. Yeah, so three, four months. So four months old, perfect. So vacuum pack it now and age it for the rest of uh, its life. Uh, so what's that, another eight? Yeah, eight months. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, age it for the other eight months or so between 10 and ten and. 10 and 12 months total time um, because smaller cheeses tend to dry out. You remember, you've got to, hang on, right, stop. You've got to remember that, um, hang on, let's get rid of, I think we finished with the gallery, have we? Oh, no, oh, there's another surprise. Um, <laughs> uh, you've got to remember that, hang on, let me just, yeah, there we go. You've got to remember that, uh, Parmesan or well, Parmigiano Reggiano, which the Italians love, um, and so do many people in the world. Uh, the wheels are massive. <clears throat> They're like 70 kilograms. So they hold their moisture a little bit better than what ours do. Um, so there, yeah, I highly recommend you vacuum pack that now and then it'll be great. Okay. And uh, finally, let's get back to the gallery again. These are the cheeses that I made, so I'm getting very excited. So you'll notice that the Guido, so this is all made with the Inglenook Dairy uh, Holstein Friesian milk that I normally get, the unhomogenized stuff from Inglenook Dairy. And thank you, guys. Thank you, Troy, um, for that milk. Um, so the, the, uh, the, you can see that the Guidos, which are made with 100% cow's milk, is on the yellow side. This has not been enhanced, this photo. This is the, the, the original colours. Uh, you'll notice that the Graviera, which I added 20% uh, goat's milk, is a lot whiter. Um, there's a day's age difference between the two cheeses. Um, but, yeah, you can see that the, the goat's milk has a lot less beta carotene uh, naturally in it, so it tends to be whiter. And then you can see that the ricotta in the middle was actually made from the whey from the Gaviera. Um, so it is a very smooth uh, ricotta. It, it's one of the smoothest ricottas that I've ever made from the whey. I didn't film the process. Maybe I should have. Um, I do have a, a whey ricotta video, but it's really old. But I tell you what, uh, Kim doesn't really like ricotta, you know, just out of the tub to eat because she says it's flavorless. But she said this really tastes good. So smooth creamy and light uh which is what i like all right so that is the gallery thank you so much everybody who sent in photos um including myself <laughs> um let's uh where is it there is how to send me a picture so how to send me a picture here we go um so we go over to the gavin weber cheese channel that's me cheeseman.tv you can type that into your browser and it'll go to my channel. I've got a redirect there. So you can go over to the About tab. 
over here. We've got the Curd Nerd sign going off. We'll get to the Super Chat in a minute. Thank you, whoever did that. Um, you can go over to the About tab here. You can see my little pointer. And you go down to here. For business inquiries, sign in to see email address. So you're going to be signed in. If you are signed in, there'll be a little link. You'll have to click a recapture. So uh, I think on desktop and tablets, you can see this. Uh, you can see this email and shoot me through your pictures. I've actually got some more from um, Bruce Gifford. He sent me heaps. So thank you, Bruce. And we'll get to those um, in, in next week as well. But anyway, that's how you do it. Um, let me just uh, kill the screen sharing. Um, so that's how you send it to me. So go to the About tab. Um, Cheryl, Cheryl um, did do the Curd Nerd sign. There we go. I'm, I'll put it back on just for you, Cheryl. I know it's very exciting. It is a great sign. And I love the way it's controlled by the Super Chat that, and the way I've got it rigged up through um, uh, if, if this, then that. So I-F-T-T-T. Um, I'm using that uh, triggering software to trigger the light, which is on a, a remote switch. Cool. It, technical, but it worked. I managed to figure it out uh, through watching a few YouTube videos and uh, reading lots of documentation. Anyway, I got it to work. Um, so thank you very much, Cheryl. I appreciate it. So let's get back to some more questions. We've still got how many minutes to go? So we've got... 20 minutes, maybe 18, 18 minutes. <coughs> Goodness me. All right. Um, you'll notice also that um, there are quite a few new people in the chat today, which is fantastic. Uh, and on the channel, I've noticed that the, the good old Parmesan video, the one that always, you know, the Italians get angry about because it's, I just say it's from the wrong province and it's not really Parmesan. I say it's Parmesan. Uh, not Parmigiano-Reggiano, so I state that in the fact. But, yeah, they all seem to go off like a frog in a sock. No offence to any Italians. I love Italians. They're great people. Very passionate about their food. But the trolls I get on that video, it's crazy. And plus the memes and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, you'll notice that the good old counter has gone up to 290,000. I think last week uh, it was 3,000 less. So, there you go, figure. Lots of people seem to like the cheese channel. I love it. Um, let's have a look at some more questions. I'm sure we got, uh, let's have a look. Um, uh, staff farms, hang on. No, that's not what I was up to. Um, oh, here we go. Cheese V says, uh, is a wine fridge a good place to age cheese? It is, uh, and because it, it's temperature controlled, but don't try and naturally age cheeses on the rack because it has a dehumidifier. It sucks all the moisture out of the fridge as well. It makes it a dry place. Just like a, you know, a wine aging basement slash cellar. Very dry places. Um so uh, what you need to do is if you're going to do any natural rind or bloomy rind cheeses or blue rind, blue mould or washed mould, all those ones that need natural air to get to it, you need to use a ripening box. Uh, and you, we do have some still available over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au where we, Kim and I have a little shop, online shop where we sell all this, you know, cheese kits and supplies and cultures and equipment, lots of equipment as well. Um, so you can go check that out if you want. Um, I've been told by Decor Australia, the company that makes them, that they're a discontinued line. So I actually had to scour the interwebs to find the stock that I've got now. Um, so as soon as that's out of stock, I've got to look for some other variation that I, I can sell because both my wholesalers now have discontinued their ripening boxes. So I'll have to find something else. Um, okay, so Herb said, uh, this is a good suggestion. A cheese making during the 12-hour event will be nice. A nice follow-along, maybe ricotta or mozzarella. That is a good suggestion. I do have a microwave out here, so I could make quick mozzarella. Uh, remembering in the last show, I did a live cheese tasting 
uh, at lunchtime, and that was my lunch. Uh, and we had five cheeses. In fact, we had one cheese that was five years old, the, oh, what was it, double Gloucester, something like that. Um, but that is a good suggestion. So uh, 12 hours live. Uh, live making of a cheese. Oh, no. I don't know if anybody's ever done that before. Trailblazing. Thank you, Herb, for the suggestion. It's down on my little book. Um, uh, now, um, there's a good, uh, good. Kevin says, try and see if you can get David Asher for your next 12 hour session. He is a wealth of knowledge. I'll see. Um, I know he's a. He does traveling road shows all over the world. Uh, I know he charges like a wounded bull for his cheese making courses because I was going to go on one until I discovered that you actually don't get to make the cheese yourself. You get to watch him make cheese. So, um, yeah, I'll look, I'll see. I'll put him on the, I'll put him on the guest list. I can only reach out and see what happens. Okay. Um, Kevin says, uh, why in some of your recipes do you add calcium chloride while heating the milk and others while just before adding the rennet? What's the difference? Uh, there's no difference whatsoever. Uh, just in some recipes, um, as long as the calcium chloride is added any time before you add the rennet, it needs to be there, obviously, for the rennet to do its work a lot better on uh, pasteurized milk or heat any heat-treated milk, even if it's like a low temperature, long hold home pasteurization or the commercial uh, 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds pasteurization. But it won't cure things like ultra pasteurization, which is it's over boiling point and ultra heat treated, which is not really milk. It's some form of white milky liquid, uh, not really milk and you can't make cheese from it except maybe uh, sweet ricotta. Yeah, we did that on the Bush Channel, did a collab with me once. I don't even know if he's still going. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. As long as you add it before the rent, it's no big deal. Uh, Mr. Zorin says, uh, I love Yui cheese videos. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Um, also, Bill's got a good suggestion. Oh, and one of my favorite YouTube channels. Um, you might look at Max Miller Tasting History Channel on YouTube. They do medieval cheese. He has done a medieval cheese. Uh, and yeah, oh, Max Miller is one of my... Uh, Tasting History is a great channel. Um, as well as Cheese History by Julia. Uh, that's a great channel as well. I haven't seen uh, Julia for a while. She's, I think she's doing one video a month, which is, which is good. But Max is doing a few more. Um, Dominic says, um, okay, if you were going there, I have my friend doing it with the goat milk cheese. Doing it. Oh, selling maybe? But yeah, thanks, mate. Um, very interesting. But yeah, I unfortunately, I've got a lot of other stuff I've got to get done today, like video production. So yeah, and as I was saying, Kim's immune compromised, so really can't mix too much with crowds. Uh, even with masks on, so we're not taking the risk. Um, here's a question from Small Town Machine Shop. Unusual name, but nice. Um, have you ever made a cheese that came out inedible for any reason, like taste or unwanted mould? Uh, yeah, of, of course, all cheese makers do. <laughs> it's part of the part of the journey, I suppose. Um, one cheese that I made, uh, what was it? It was. Um, had an ash line in the middle. Uh, it's called, uh, not monster. What's the word I'm looking for? Oh, I can't remember the cheese. Hey, anyway, it's got, had an ash line in the middle. Um, I actually filmed it before the studio was built. It was in the frame. And uh, yeah, it, I didn't salt it enough and it was too bitter. And I, I, and I even tried to make American cheese out of it, uh, which is just by adding some... Um, uh, sodium, God, my, calcium. I got to remember the words now. Bicarb and bicarb and um, citric acid. It's called um, sodium citrate. That's what I'm looking for. There we go. The old brain's not working. So I had tried to add some of that, but it was still bitter. So that didn't work out. Also, um, some of the petite monsters that I made. 
um, uh, were a little bit overripe and a little bit sour. So I didn't really like those as well. But there's been other cheeses that um, I couldn't recover. But yeah, it's it's always good fun. Um, so Cheryl says, watching Gavin and the Fantastic Cheese Channel or watching football with a husband. I am so torn. <laughs> I don't think you are. I think that's why you're here, Cheryl. Um, and Jim says, and that's a good, uh, says that Gavin uses a wine fridge with an external thermostat as temperature controller. It needs to be slightly higher temp than you can set with a fridge. So uh, not technically correct, Jim. Kind of. I used to use a wine fridge without a controller because you could set it at 13. But I found here in summer in Australia, because the laundry gets quite warm, um, it, it drifted. The temperature drifted all the time. Um, I use a dorm fridge. So it's like a bar fridge, small fridge that you can put under your you know, kitchen counter. Um, and that's got the external thermostat on it and that, and that works fine. So that's good. Um, Leaky says, um, good evening. Can we use old cheese as a culture to make a new cheese and how? Thank you for your advice. Unfortunately, no, you can't. You cannot use old cheese for the starter culture. You can use blue cheeses for the blue mold, um, but you can't use the culture. Remembering the culture dies <clears throat> in the cheese. So during the aging process, once all the lactose is gone, the lactic bacteria um, die off and turn into enzymes. And it's those enzymes that help, <clears throat> sorry, break down the proteins and the fats in the cheese and make the flavors that we all love. So those lactic bacteria are now dead. So you cannot sample from another cheese. The only way you can do that is to, uh, so the only way, you, only thing that it's a dairy product that you can kind of do that is yogurt. Now yogurt still continues to have live cultures in it because it's not very old <clears throat> and it hasn't been aged and it hasn't eaten all the lactose in the, in the yogurt. So, uh, and they also have a higher tolerance for having less lactose in them. So yogurt, you can use yogurt, a spoonful of your yogurt you've made, plonk it into some milk and, it turn, and at the right conditions and temperature, you can make new yogurt. It's forever. It's like never ending yogurt using the culture. So yeah, that's the only case where you could use an old dairy product to make a new dairy product. So I hope that helps. Okay. Um, uh, Cheryl also says that the cloth banded cheese is the best thing I've ever eaten. The mold was scary though. Yeah, indeed it was. Um, uh, where is it? Uh, so, Ip, uh, what is it? Ispoth? Sorry if I got that wrong. Uh, I want to try to make your kefili cheese. Can I substitute an easier to find culture than MO30? Yeah, indeed. I know that those Sacco cultures that I stock in their store and use here at home, um, not everybody can get their hands on them. So a good substitute for a good kefili is um, MA4000 series by Denisco Choose It. I think they're a French manufacturer. And I'm pretty sure they're a lot of the cheese making suppliers in the US and other places through Europe. Uh, you can get MA4000 series culture. Um, it's a little bit of a hybrid culture. It's got some mesophilic and some thermophilic in it. And it's as close to a farmhouse cheese you can get, the cultures in raw milk. Um, so, yeah, use that. Um, in fact, I think in my last Kefili video, I did use MA4000. And the flavor was a lot more distinct than what it normally is with MO30. So... I think uh, that is a good one to use. Or MA11 is another substitute, a direct substitute for um, for MO30 by Sacco. So, um, yeah, so you can check those out. Uh, what's the next question? Is uh, can Manel says, can you use the culture when it has expired? Uh, yeah, I think I mentioned that before. So, like I said, I've used uh, cultures up to two years past their best before date. There's no real expiry date in a starter culture. It just says best before. Um, so as long as you keep it frozen and uh, dry and it's still in powder form, I think it's still viable. Um, like I said, the last two cheeses that I made successfully, uh, both of those 
um, both of those were using a starter culture that was best before 2019. So there you go. Um, okay. Uh, Toby says, uh, hello, Toby, in the UK. Um, and I think he's Mrs. Erica. Oh, I hope I got that right. I'm I'm not I'm pretty good with names usually. Um close to 300,000 now. Congratulations. Yeah, unfortunately YouTube don't send you any new plaques or anything which is in my other studio. Um you know the YouTube play button thing. The next one you get's at a million. So I think I'll probably be dead before I get to a million unless there's another popular meme about cheese somewhere along the line. Somebody create one. Wink wink. I can't really do that myself. Anyway, um, uh, Toby, Toby also says, love the T-shirt. Indeed, get it, mate. It's good. Good value. Get it for the missus. Um, Martha says, and how much time have we got? Oh, gee, we've only got four minutes, so I'm going to have to make this one the last one. Uh, could you help me find a sweet uh, cheese or cream? Uh, it's like butter, but not. Not cream cheese, not whipped cream. It's like the texture of brie and the sweetness of unsweetened whipped cream. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. So, um, from Ash Frey is what I think you're saying, Martha. There is a video for it. Go to the channel. Uh, there's a little search thing on the channel. Uh, look for from Ash Frey, and it it is what you're looking for. So, it's like a sweet cream cheese, but not really like cream cheese. It's not sour at all. It does have the texture of brie when it's really runny. Um, and, yeah, it's got the sweetness of unsweetened whipped cream. Perfect. And the good thing is you can cook with it because it doesn't um, split. Yeah, so that's why they made, uh, I think, the French invented fromage fray because it's great for cooking. Uh, it doesn't split, split like cream or whipped cream. So there you go. Um I th she's added on. I think I think it may be clotted cream, but I'll have to check the city for some. But no, yeah, fromage fray. I think that's what you're after. Um, okay. Uh, Star Farm says, I would substitute MO with Floridanica or Aroma B. You could, but you can remember that Floridanica has two additional starter cultures uh, and Aroma B is exactly the same thing as Floridanica. So that's an aromatic mesophilic compared to MO30, which is just a basic mesophile with two lactic bacteria, and if I can remember them, so Lactobacillus lactis subspecies Cremorus and Lactobacillus lactis subspecies Lactus are the two that are in MO30. So if you can find any substitute, uh, I'm sure most cheese-making websites have the strain in them. So that'd be cool. Um, and one last super chat, which is going off right now before we wrap up the show, uh, it's from Toby and five pounds, well, four dollars, four pounds, 49. It's kill the light. Um, we'll be getting the T-shirt, Erica, and I send love to you both. Thank you, Erica and Toby. Appreciate it, mate. All righty. Um, let's wrap up the show. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, it has been a joy, as always. It's really lifted my Sunday. I was feeling a little bit down in the dumps before I started the show, but when I finished, when I finished with all this interaction, uh, with all my um, curd nerds and curd nerdettes, it's just, it makes my Sunday morning. It really does. Anyway, so if you want to learn how to make cheese, pop over to the Curd Nerd Academy, go to courses.littlegreenworkshops.com.au and you can see my beginner's cheese making course, uh, which is about $150 Australian and you learn to make nine different cheeses. Uh, if you need supplies for your cheese making needs, don't forget, pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au Go to the cheese section and, yeah, we can get those to you. There are even more. But where did I open up this week? Hong Kong. Um, we're going to ship to Hong Kong as well. So there's a lot of Asian countries we can now ship to. New Zealand, Canada, uh, US. Uh, Europeans and UK are still can't due to their tax laws. So a bit of a problem there. Anyway, don't forget, you can also go to the merch store if you want to pick up the Cheesegasm T-shirt that I made this week. Uh, you can go to cheeseman.tv. Can I, can I change? No, I can't. I can't copy that link. My God. Anyway, so there's the link on the screen. You can type it, freeze, take a snapshot, whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, you can get the merch over there. 
anyway, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds. It's been fantastic as always. I really do enjoy Sunday mornings. And uh, yeah, without your questions, it wouldn't be a show. So send them in. Also, don't forget to send photos into that email address that I showed you on the screen after the gallery. Um, and you can pop over there and shoot me through uh, pictures of your homemade cheese. Um, success or disasters, I don't mind. I can do a little bit of diagnosis, as you saw today during the gallery as well. Not too much. Don't flood me with um, uh, cheese issues. Uh, but, yeah, um, successful cheeses. Send them along. Love them. Love showing them. So do all the curd nerds. Anyway, thanks for watching, curd nerds. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.